Hey guys, Callum here, and in today's video, we're going to be reviewing this here, the Creality CR6 SE. Let's get started. Okay, so I've had this printer now for a few months, and I've actually got a few of them, so I really do feel quite well versed in what it is that makes this printer tick, what's good about it, and what's not so good about it. If you watched my reviews before, you know I don't pull any punches, so you get a very honest review for what I like and don't like about this printer. Let's start with a few specs. The Creality CR6 SE is firstly priced at around $409.99 US dollars on the Creality website. However, I've seen this printer floating around in the UK for around 260 Great British pounds. So in my book, that's quite a reasonably priced printer for something that packs as many features as this one here does. In terms of other specs you might see that it is a bed slinger design so it has that moving bed it is a bowden so the extruder is placed away from the printer and it has a 24 volt supply power supply a 32 bit silent board and a 350 watt meanwhile power supply the printer weighs 9.2 kg which creality say is quite light but it feels like quite a dense, heavy, sturdy little printer. The advertised dimensions for this printer are 442 millimeters by 462 millimeters by 540 millimeters with the handle on. However, I like to verify and do my own measurements and I found that the minimum you would need is 460 millimeters in the X, 600 millimeters in the Y to account for the movement of the bed, and then 510 millimeters in the Z, 540 if you were to include the handle on the top. And obviously that doesn't include a spool holder wherever you end up mounting that. So it does require quite a lot of space for a small printer. The build volume of this printer is 235 by 235 millimeters and then 250 millimeters in the Z axis. So that actually only works out at a build volume efficiency of about 10%, which isn't great, but a lot of these smaller printers don't have quite as good build volume efficiency because there are a number of components that obviously have to be included, so they just take up as much space as they take. The printer has dual Z axis, so it's got two Z lead screws that move and they are powered by independent stepper motors. And they are also supported at the top by a timing belt, which helps to keep them in sync. The printer has its Z touch probe built into the hot end itself and it performs bed leveling via auto bed leveling. It is a completely auto bed leveling printer. There is no option to manual level, and that is done via 16 point leveling, which Creality claim takes 48 seconds, and it is about that. It has a filament runout sensor, which is a photoelectric sensor, which is more reliable than a sort of manual sensor. It's got adjustable belts for the X and Y axis, and it also has a tool drawer, which can talk more about later. The UI is a touchscreen and that works really nicely. Okay, so that's it for the general overview of the printer. Now I'm going to start with the cons and dig into what I didn't like so much about this printer. The first thing that annoyed me is the spool holder. You'll see there's a roll of filament on this printer at the moment, but this spool holder actually didn't come with the printer. It's just one I've installed which worked better. The spool holder for this printer is this one here. It's one that Creality use on a few of their machines. What the idea of this is, is that it can go onto the side of the printer and clip down like so, and you can move it about a bit, put it in various places. And the idea is it's meant to give you some flexibility. However, what I found is the ideal location for this holder to be is here. But you'll notice that there's a big cable sticking in the way. So by the time you come to put some filament on the printer, like that, you've got this cable rubbing against the filament and it's just, it's not optimum in my opinion anyway. So for me, I, I didn't like the spool holder. I didn't feel like it did enough. And also when you're going with such a, a big bulky spool holder that sticks this far out from the, the printer, you're taking up more space, but also you're taking up more space without the benefit of even being able to use a 2kg spool. So if I was to try and put that on there, it's it won't sit down enough. So I didn't think this was a very well thought out design. And personally, in my opinion, I think for this printer, it's best to just have a spool holder sitting up on top above it and out the way. 
If you were to go for this printer and were stuck for ideas, then you can either design and print this ball holder yourself, which could sit on the top and be mounted in with some T-nut screws, or you could print a freestanding spool holder. And there's loads of great designs out there on the web. So that's the first thing I didn't like. The second thing I didn't think was brilliant was the implementation of the Z-Probe. So this printer uses a force-based sensor, and that's built into this hot end here. And the way it does it is it literally rams the head of the printer down into the bed, and then that force pushes up against the sensor uh, and, it, and it triggers. The thing is, to enable that to work, they've had to build in a degree of flexibility into the hot end. And that translates into very small little XY movements, which you can see in some prints in some cases. And for me, it just isn't the greatest way to do it. The benefit is you don't need any additional hardware like a, a sort of BL touch sensor or a, sort of like an easy magnetic sensor or anything like that. So it is, it is quite good, but um, it's not perfect. Uh, the, the, one, the one shout out, the one benefit I would say to that is you can swap and change hot ends, nozzles, all that sort of thing without it affecting the leveling process. So for example, if you were to change out the nozzle in a BL touch setup, then when it came to level, you would get different offsets and you'd have to adjust your offset. Whereas with this printer, you just change the nozzle, do a re-level and that's done. You don't have to play around with the offset. So that's quite good, um, but it's not perfect. So it's pretty good, but not perfect. Another thing that annoyed me on this printer was it's been firmware limited to 235 by 235 millimeters on the bed. Whereas actually we've got 245 millimeters of bed by 255 millimeters of bed. That's the size of the glass. And this printer is easily able to move over that full amount of area. So. I understand that these manufacturers do this to try and limit the, the sort of usable build space to prevent failed prints and errors and things like that, but I'd rather have the control. Another thing I noticed with this printer is the Z homing does seem to fail quite frequently. Well, not that frequently, but I'd say maybe, maybe one in 10. So although theoretically this printer is good enough to sort of just hit print and go, it isn't because that Z homing does so sometimes fail, 10% of the times it fails. And so for me as a printer, you do have to watch it start. Once it's started, then you can leave it and the, the leveling is, is quite good and it does stay quite well. Although just a point on that, if you are taking the bed in and out quite a lot, then you will have to keep leveling. If you just leave your prints on, pop them off when it's gone cold, then you'd probably be all right not having to level too frequently. Another thing that's a little bit disappointing with this printer is from the screen itself, from the, the UI, you're not able to adjust any of the motion settings like the acceleration and the jerk. I quite like it when you can do those directly on the printer rather than having to connect uh, an external computer and, and put in those commands via G-code. Just makes it easier to use. The next thing that annoyed me a little bit was the, the Bowden implementation. You'll see that all they've provided to keep the, the Bowden tube to the cable is these sort of weird little clips and I don't know if I'm using them wrong or something but they, they're just not very secure um, and so there's, there's a bit too much play between the Bowden tube and the cable and it's not constraining everything as much as I would like there. I do like the fact that they are reusable though so props to that one. Next thing I wanted to moan about a little bit was that the cooling is only from one side. When I first saw this printer and I was buying this printer I didn't look into it too much and I sort of looked at it and thought oh yeah it's got cooling on two sides the sort of the shape of the the hot end makes you think that it's coming from both sides that sort of angular shape but it is only just from this one side and it is a 40 by 40 by 10 fan so it's not the best for cooling and then that's only from one side so don't expect any fantastic bridging results with this printer. And while I'm on fans, that leads me to the final point of this printer, the final con of this printer. Obviously it is advertised as a quiet machine, but can you hear that fan? It's quite noisy. That's the part calling fan making the most noise. And then there's a big deep hum from within the main body of the printer, which is presumably there to keep the, uh, the control board cool or, or whatever. But, so although the, the general movements and mechanics of the printer are quite quiet, the fan noise is the, the loudest thing on this printer. I'll flick that back off for a second. 
and now talk about the pros. So I sort of touched on cable management a little bit in terms of, of how the, the Bowden tube here is not that well constrained. But on the whole, the cable management on this printer is really good. You see these bed slinger designs where the bed moves back and forward and you've got lots of the components in different areas can sometimes be a bit of a pain with cable management, but this printer is great. It's not got many little cables sticking out and where they do it's only in, in small portions. They've separated out the cables into this nice braided cable along here, which then splits off into two. So one half comes over here and does all the components for the hot end, like the, um, the Z sensor and the, the thermistor and hot end cartridge, that sort of thing, and the fans. So that's, that's here into this piece there and that will go into a little breakout board. And then we've also got the other half of it goes into a breakout board again, and that will do the, the X stepper, the X axis limit switch, the filament runout sensor, and the stepper driver for the extruder itself. So that's all quite good. That's all quite neatly done. And while I'm on cable management, it's all really nicely strain relieved. So obviously every, everywhere the, the, the cables mount into something, they've got a nice, strong, sturdy unit. So you've got that there, you get into here, you've got a, a clip that sort of holds it. And down in the bottom, you've got another clip. And the, the back of the bed, it's got the sturdiest cable support on the back of a bed I've ever seen. It's got screwed down, sticks out by about eight centimeters. So I imagine that'd be the last thing that breaks on the printer. I love really good strain relief because it means that you get longer life out of these printers. If you know me, you know I hate waste. And so anything like that that extends the life of the, the electrical parts of the printer is fantastic. Another thing that's done brilliantly on these printers is the belt tensioners. When this printer arrived with me, the, the belts were loose and just being able to turn a knob a few times here and here for the, here for the X axis and here for the Y axis is so easy. And it just means you've, you've never got any excuses for having too loose a belt on your printer, which is great. The other thing I really like about this printer is the way the bed can be removed so easily. It's got these two clips at the front, which just rotate, and then you just lift the bed and pull it out like so. To put it back, you just push against the clips at the back and then turn again at the front and that's it. So <laughs> pretty much less than 10 seconds to take it out and put it back in again, which I think is really good. There's no faffing about with little small clips that are really hard and painful to use or messing about with bulldog clips, which always seem to disappear when you're taking the bed off. Um, yeah, so this is a really good implementation and it holds the bed really sturdily. The runout sensor on this printer is a photoelectric sensor. It works much more reliably than those that rely on the, the sort of physical pressure from a, from a switch or something like that. So I found that is very reliable, works really good. And also at the entry point of the runout sensor, there is a metal clip, which just means there's no filament on plastic wear down and that's gonna last for as long as the printer does. So that's great. I know that uh, when this printer was first released, people complained about how difficult it was to load the filament and Corality have added in this little clip between the runout sensor and the drive gear itself, which just means that it's easy for the filament to line in. So personally, I found this printer really easily to load and unload. Uh, so hopefully anyone else that tries it now on this version will do. The extruder I've also found really easy to use. It's got a sort of clip on and off. So you just push it one way and then that takes the strain off and you can push and pull the filament manually really easily. And then you just flick it back and it's back engaged, ready to be powered by the, by the printer's drive gear itself. So personally, I've found that all work really well. The final positive I wanted to talk about on this printer was the tool drawer. And I've left this one untouched. So again, we can talk about it. So it's like this. And we've got a spatula. We've got stickers from Corality, which I'd rather not have, but there we go. We've got a little rod for cleaning out the filament. And we've got your Allen keys. You've got a fixed size two-headed wrench. You've got little flush cutters for cleaning your prints. You've got some spare nozzles, spare clips. You've got a USB adapter card, and you've also got the nozzle tightening wrench. So all in all, a nice little set. And obviously if you take the foam out from this, from this case, then you end up with quite a lot more space that you can use and just helps to keep all your tools there in one place ready when you need them.
so yeah, that's it really. That's what I thought in terms of the pros and cons. Can you guess whether I would recommend this printer? Drum roll. I would. I, I do think it is a great printer. It's not perfect because I, I like the manual leveling, but I can't complain too much because it does work very well. And I'm someone that purchased this myself originally. It wasn't sent from Corality or anything like that. And I've since purchased more. So that sort of proves my opinion on it. Would I recommend this printer over the Corality Ender 3 S1? Well, you're just gonna have to wait and see for my comparison video, which I'm going to do shortly. Who would I recommend this printer to? Well, I'd recommend it both to anyone who's thinking of starting a print farm. I think it works quite well. It's quite quick and easy to use, and that helps a lot. I would also recommend it to anyone who's starting out first time, because I think that auto leveling is actually quite a handy feature. And I know a lot of people struggle with getting the bed level, so that does help. If you're someone that wants to tinker, upgrade, play a lot, then it's okay, but I think there's probably better printers on the market for you. Anyway, that's it for this video. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe, ring the bell so you're notified of more content in the future. I've got a few different style videos coming up, so I'll be interested in seeing what people think of those. But in the meantime, I've got three questions for you. One, what printer would you like me to review next? I've got nothing in the queue, so I'm open for recommendations. Two, is there any sort of tutorial or anything like that that you would like to see me do? Even if I don't know how to do it, I will happily learn and I quite like the challenge of something I don't know about. And three, what filament have you got your eye on at the moment? It doesn't have to be 3D tomorrow. It can be anything. I love knowing what people are looking at in the market. If you've got nothing to say, but just want to support the channel, then hashtag workhorse in the comments and I will see you on the next one. Until then, happy printing. Cheers. The extruder mechanism on this printer is quite interesting. So there's a little bit of B-roll in case you're interested in that too. This handle here rotates through two positions. Narrow, where the, uh, the spring is fully engaged and then pushing, so it's slightly longer in that angle. And we'll push this along to take some of the pressure off the spring. And then that would uh, open up the space effectively between the pulley and the drive gear up there. This little bit here is pulled and there's like a, a sort of triangle triangle shape that pulls against it and that there is where the spring sits so when this is tightened there so when this bit there is tightened pulls this triangle further down like that and so it does indeed adjust so got the spring in here the tension of the spring so you can actually adjust the tension of these extruders even though it's not at all obvious